Everybody's Tyler here, the World Champions. You're checking team number 1114, Symbotics Hall of Fame. Symbotics coming in, absolutely phenomenal machine. Symbotics, an absolute terror this year. A couple district event wins as recording this right now. They only got one match left, currently number two seed in their division. Take a look at what Symbotics has to offer. I love the overall uh, packaging of this robot as we go through. Great intake into their arm. We talk about some of the programming that's made this happen. Can't wait to tell you more about Symbotics and what they have to bring and charge it up on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Annie Mark has parts and products designed specifically for First Robotics Competition and First Tech Challenge teams. Many Annie Mark staff are first alumni, mentors, and event volunteers. Visit AnnieMark.com for all your educational robotics needs. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit of parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. Ty, well, let's start off on the uh, base of your robot here. I know you've been making some iterations and changes in the championships. So talk about what's been going on there as we start to follow uh, the journey up into your robot. Yeah, I mean, our design process definitely started from the bottom. We wanted a really low center of gravity, so we started out with a 30-pound uh, steel quarter-inch base plate right there. That completely helped us. Um, it kind of got our uh, tipping point to about 85 degrees. Uh, that was really cool to kind of see the robot almost be untippable, uh, so that was important to us. Then from there, we kind of looked at our swerves. We originally thought about doing a three motor swerve, but ended up uh, not having the resources or time to kind of figure that out. So we went with a simple uh, West Coast product two motor swerve, which so far has held up great. Originally, um, at the beginning of the season, we had it uh, geared a bit more down, but now it's kind of at the max it can be. So we're super, super quick. Um, we made a couple changes from our first event to our second event, which I'll go over once we get to the intake. So after that, uh, going over our arm, we wanted something kind of complex, something kind of simple at the same time. Originally, it was a telescoping arm right in the middle, and then um, the two sides, same thing. Uh, or sorry, not telescoping, but it was still the same as it is now. After we kind of went through the design of um, keeping it still, it worked out the exact same way. So we are like, okay, we might as well keep it non-telescoping, and it's been great so far. Um, originally, we had a pincer claw, which took a long time to line up, things like that. Um, it had a light sensor, so it could automatically check when we had game pieces in it. We used that for our first event, which was at uh, Georgian College. And after we kind of worked out the bugs, we re realized we needed to make a change for Waterloo, our second event. Um, that's when we kind of came up with the roller design and kind of more uh, touch it, own it kind of feeling to it. Um, because we're able to quickly grab cubes, cones, but mainly um, our cycle time became way quicker since we're able to either have um, our lines partner throw cubes down uh, from the single station and we can just grab them from halfway down the field. Uh, that shaves off even a couple seconds from our cycle. So that's really helped. Along with that, we added um, a wrist in between or like at the same time as our roller intake, which added just a bit more play when we were going to line up to score. Uh, so that really helped with the accuracy of our um, intake and out, uh, outtaking the game pieces. So after that, it was kind of making sure that our autos uh, were working well, since we didn't really have that much time to uh, practice and do our autos before our first event. So first event was kind of, all right, let's get it in there, see how it works, and then we'll improve it after. And that's kind of uh, what we like to do, not only this season, but every season, making sure that we're going in with a really strong robot and then uh, finishing with an even stronger robot. So it's really helped. Um, some of our autos that we were able to do, one of our programmers um, can kind of explain that a bit. So right now we currently have three, uh, yeah, three autos. So they change slightly from side to side. So our regular three auto, it will score one cone at the start. It'll go and get another. It'll score the cube mid and then go back one more time and then score the last high. Um, and then because they're on the bump side, there is the bump which gets in the way of our path of uh, you know going to the cubes and that sort of thing. We uh, score the first cone mid instead of high because that saves us a little bit of time because when we score mid, it's just like a, a swipe that instantly puts the cone on. 
Um, also during auto, we use our limelights to track our position using the April tags on the field, uh, which is super nice and makes it so we can always have an accurate position of where we are on the field. Um, another thing to help us grab the cubes during the match is um, we actually use a different pipeline on the limelights to detect the cubes. So we go to the point and then we actually make the robot drive to the cube. So we can al almost always make sure that we're going to pick up the cube every time in the auto. So something I want to ask you, if we if we go from a programming standpoint, when you're approaching this game up, you know, I noticed like you're not necessarily doing like object detection, that sort of thing like that for it, but you know, I still see when I watch Symbotics, your, your cycle times have been increasing a lot. It can't that can't just be mechanical on side things too. Like what have you found yourself improving upon as a programmer throughout the season especially? Well, I mean it's we've kind of set, kept the same sort of principles, but just like slightly increased upon it all the time. Like for example, um, when we're going to the human loading station, we actually use the limelights to detect the April tag there and then have us line up perfectly. Um, I mean, that's really only the um, automated part sure. during the uh, tele -op period. It's mostly just the drivers improving over time and us being, of course, really speedy. Uh, one thing I also want to ask from a uh, mechanical side as well, too, looking at uh, your robot here. So from your uh, position-wise, can we see the arm come up uh, again and so we can check that out? So when you come up here, I mean, you guys are just so stable as you go through, and I noticed the tensioners on here uh, for this as well. Kind of stuck with uh, the one type of chain from the very uh, start. Obviously, it was a bit different with the wrist. Sure. Uh, it, we kind of just mimicked what we did right here um, for the wrist as well, which you know, why would we change something that already works, right? That's fair, yeah. Um, a lot of, like, for things kind of like feedback, um, originally at our first event, we had um, the whole arm kind of extended when we kind of figured when we were going for HP, we don't need to extend all the way. So um, as you saw just now, when it was at HP, um, these back two bars were completely against the hard stops, which really uh, reduced how much we were shaking when we were trying to grab. Uh, the piece because that was a problem at our first event. We were pretty shaky as a robot, but after we kind of switched um, how the arm was positioned for not only HP but for scoring, um, it, it really helped reduce okay, we can um, do it on this shake yeah. instead of just going, okay, score. Right? No, that makes sense. I appreciate clarifying that as well, too, on uh, as well. well Symbotics, uh, like I said, doing phenomenal here at the World Championships. As we record this, we wish you best of luck here, and to keep on making awesome robots here. We really appreciate it, and the benefit you bring to the first community is awesome. So thank you so much, and Thanks good luck. Thanks so much. Awesome. This video on first updates now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your educational robotics needs. From mechanical, electrical, tools, and hardware, Animark has over 200 years of first-team experience and offers high-quality and affordable solutions for the robotics mobility and competition markets. Head on over to Animark.com to get started. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.